Hi all, welcome to Beanie Composter. Dahlias are still looking beautiful. And the colours on this hydrangea is just the pinnacle of autumn. But as we're reaching mid-autumn and the temperature range is going up and down, and also me and the missies are on a daily argument about the central heating, whether it should be on or off, I thought today's video would be great to do on everything you need to know about temperatures with the hot bin. So a little while back we had a question from Gary Parker. He asked me, does size matter? Well Gary, you're going to have to ask Miss Beanie about that one. Oh sorry, you meant um, the probes in the hot bin, didn't you? So, do the probe size in the hot bin really matter? Let's try it out because I've tried an experiment to see if it does. When I first got my hot bin, which is the old style one, you know, we're talking probably four years ago or more, the actual thermometer was really long. And when I got the mini one just recently, the thermometer on that one was quite short and I think most of you probably now when you order a hot bin are getting the short one and I think maybe that's because they're trying to save some money or maybe the shorter one just works better so I've put both of mine in the hot bin to test how you know the temperature range between the long probe and the short one is so let's have a look So the smaller probe, which is an awful lot shorter, is reading a little bit higher than the long one. If you're having problems reading your dial, then either you need to go back to spec savers, or you may have that problem in the Tina Turner record of steamy windows. So you could have a load of condensation that's built up inside the glass, and that's just you know making it difficult for you to read the temperature. These probes are not industrial quality. So from time to time you can get a build up of condensation behind the screen and the best way to solve this is to place them on a warm radiator and just leave it overnight. That will naturally dry it out and evaporate that condensation away. One safety feature I would say is, especially if you've got kids in the house, then put something over the top like a cork just to prevent that any child from falling on it or even yourself so just if you are going to do that method make sure you're looking at the health and safety and put maybe a cork over the top of the you know the sharp bit anyone who's out there who's got all the gear and no idea and you're trying to get rid of any condensation in your thermometer then don't go in the shed or in your garage and get one of those hot air guns and start heating it up because all you'll do is you'll mount all the glue that's sealing everything there and it'll just ruin your thermometer. So like I say, just put it on the radiator and leave that you know, overnight just to naturally dry it out. To be hot composting, you need to have the hot bin in a certain range of temperatures and the hot bin provide you a thermometer with a nice easy to read dial on it and as you can see here you've got a green segment which is between 40 and 60 degrees so that is the optimum temperatures for hot composting although the optimum temperatures for hot composting are between 40 and 60 you are going to have, you know, occasional times where your hot bin is going to get a lot hotter than that. 
but if you do go over 72 degrees then that heat is going to start killing the bacteria that is good for breaking down your compost so it's better to try and get your temperature back down to the optimum of temperature zone of 40 to 60 and the way you can do that is just by simply opening your aeration valve wide open and just leaving it like that for maybe a couple of hours or until that dial has gone back into the optimum hot composting zone temperatures. If you think you're doing everything right but the temperature of your hot bin doesn't seem to be getting hot then you can calibrate these probes just to check they are really working if that's your concern so I'm going to show you how we do that so there's actually three ways you could calibrate your probe so the first one would be to send it away to some professional organization to get those to calibrate it but let's be honest the things only cheap as chips so why would you do that the second one is if you know you've got a dial that is calibrated then you can compare them side by side just to check they are working exactly the same and then the third way which is the way I'm showing you now which is the easiest way and it doesn't have to be a hundred percent accurate because you know this is only a probe that's going in your hot bin so as long as you get it near and near about that's perfect but I will put some you know figures up on the screen to show you what you should figures you should be looking for so in the boiling water you want to be reaching a hundred degrees and you saw when we done that we actually got it to a hundred degrees and the other part of that is you need to put it into iced water and you want to reach a temperature of zero degrees so I've just put, you know, a bowl of ice into the, into the freezer. I'm just going to add into that some normal tap water and then leave the ice to, to cool that water right down. And then we're going to stick the probe in. And it's going to take, and then we're just going to leave that for a while and see what temperature we come down to. So it's going to take you know a couple of minutes but we really want to be going down to zero degrees there you see guys we're on zero and the ray temperature is showing minus zero there so perfect with the hot bin you've got two dials one is externally on the top and you've got the other one that you keep inside the one on top I don't really find that useful our external temperature is reading 35 degrees and if we open the hatch to look inside what's going on with the internal temperature we are reading 50 degrees there roughly now this hot bin is quite full so we're you know close to the top and those temperatures are not marrying up if we emptied this hot bin today that volume would drop right down but the temperature of the waste inside would probably st stay the same and as I put more waste in that's going to rise up but because we're so low down the external temperature is going to go down even more because it would be recording more of the outside temperature rather than the inside temperature. So for me, that external dial is really, you know, almost useless. Gordon Anderson had a great idea. He bought a Wi-Fi thermometer and he put that in the hot bin and that enabled him to be indoors or anywhere he wanted look on his phone and he could monitor what was going on with the temperature inside his hot bin he did come back and say that you know it stopped working i think due to the steam in the hot bin but i'm sure if you bought an airtight bag and sealed that up so no steam could get in then that would be a great way of you know 
testing out your hot bin temperatures and in the convenience of your house or wherever you are you can monitor what's going on in your hot bin if you have got your hot bin hot composting then it's going to be at three temperature zones so you've got the top zone where you are adding your fresh waste and the bacteria is eating that and creating a lot of heat then you've got your middle zone where the bacteria has eaten most of it but it's still gradually breaking down but the temperature has gone down a little bit then you've got your bottom colder zone which would be around about 10 to 20 degrees it's all composted and, and ready to empty when you are adding new waste into your hot bin that fresh waste is going to be a lot colder than the waste that's in your hot bin so I'm going to show you the variations in waste temperatures as we add in the fresh stuff to the old stuff the garden waste that's been kept in the shed that's at 11.6 so about 12 degrees and the kitchen caddy waste we're at 17.6 17.4 considering the house is only 20 degrees indoors that's not bad going and in the hot bin we are at 31 32 but we're reading literally you know the top of it and not actually down below where most of the heat is So waste is ready, let's put it in. As I'm mixing this colder waste in, it's cooling down the hotter waste that's in there naturally. And that's why you need to give it a day for the temperature, you know, to come back up otherwise if you just keep adding in cold waste into your hot bin it's eventually going to just make it go colder by the way one thing I do hate about this fine um, paper is it's a bit like wedding confetti it goes bloody everywhere if it's a windy day so probes back in and let's take the temperature So we were at 30, I think it was about 32, wasn't it, when we put that, before we put the fresh waste in. And now we're, you know, round about 23, 24. And obviously I've had the lid open for a little while. So that's close to almost a 10 degrees drop in temperature just by adding fresh waste into your hot bin. So that is why you need to give it a day to recover to get back up to hot composting temperatures and if you are you know at 60 or over then that temperature isn't going to drop as quick as this one so the lower the temperature of the hot bin the longer your hot bin is going to take to recover that temperature so if you are hot composting you know 60 and over the recovery time is going to be much quicker and you can add waste pretty much every other day with no worries if you are worried about your temperature dial if it's not working i mean have a look in here now we're like someone with cross eyes you got one on one one's in the green and the other one's not so that just goes to show how what difference in temperature you've got with a longer probe which is going right down to the you know the middle zone which is a lot warmer than all that fresh waste we've just put in which is you know showing quite a difference in temperature there as you're adding new waste in okay guys it's the following day and we're just following up with the probes to check 
what's happened with the two different lengths. It's the missus birthday today, so wish her a happy birthday. So we don't want to be out here for too long. But have a look what's happened. So, as we can see, this is the small probe. Which there's a huge range of difference there in temperature. So, all I'm trying to say is... If you have got like the longer probe, it just shows the difference in temperature in each section there. So we put all this fresh waste in yesterday and already this one's showing 60, you know, nearly 60 degrees. Whereas this one is showing around about 45 to 50. But there you can see with the difference in probe length that the difference in temperature readings that you would get. I think it's fair to say though, whichever probe you do have, as long as you've got it in the green section, you're going to be fine and you know you're hot composting. And even if you don't have a thermometer inside and, you know, you are going by the outside one, which for me is a bit, you know, not really practical and giving good readings. But when you open the lid, when you see steam coming out, that's a clear sign that you're hot composting so as long as you're achieving that everything should be good it's the missy's birthday today i forgot to get her some um, flowers so i rushed down the supermarket and got her some flowers but for some reason she's not very happy so i think i'm gonna have to just give her some of these there you go happy birthday thank you <laughs> <laughs> so Gary posed the question does size matter or well, looking at that evidence it kind of does in a way um, the longer probe really does show that you know in that middle section that you're retaining and keeping a nice heat there and you could be a little bit concerned if you've got the shorter one that as you're putting that in that's not actually hot composting because as we're seeing there, the shorter probe isn't even in the green as we've added new waste into there. By the way guys, for all you that wanted to know the answer to that earlier question, I asked the missies, does size matter? And she says, no it doesn't when you don't do anything at all. And she said to me, why do you think they invented Ann Summers? <laughs> A quick summary on the bench for all you hardcore viewers. Although the temperature isn't exactly rocket science, one thing to remember is keeping it in between 40 and 60 is your perfect temperatures and you're going to be hot composting if you're at 60 degrees 32 times quicker than a normal cold composting bin. So aim for that sort of temperature. And the internal thermometer for me is the most important. As I've shown you, the external one really doesn't help you gauge what temperature's going on in the hot bin. And also for temperatures, people have asked me, does it matter if I put the hot bin in the sun or the shade? Well, it doesn't because the insulation properties of the hot bin are so good it really won't affect it if it's in hot sun or if it's in you know cold shade so when it comes to temperatures i hope this video has helped you out a little bit and answered a couple of your questions and until next time give us a thumbs up and a like subscribe if you haven't already and until next time happy composting thanks for watching and enjoy